In this video, we want to examine the concept of completing the square to help us solve quadratic equations. Now, combining completing the square with the square root property that we've seen in some of the other examples will allow us to develop this fantastic formula called the quadratic formula that will help us solve any quadratic equation. But let's first start with completing the square because there's some great things that we can get from completing the square. Now, when we talk about completing the square, it's all about finding this missing piece here that will allow this polynomial to factor. And not just factor by any old means. We want it to factor very specifically as a binomial square. That means we want the factors to be the exact same factor. Now, I could put an 8 here, and x squared plus 6x plus 8 would factor, but they wouldn't have the same two factors. The way that we can find this is almost like with a little song. You take this middle coefficient here of 6, you divide it by 2, and you square it. That's going to help you figure out the missing piece that goes here. So by doing the work, we come up with 3 squared, which equals 9. So this is saying that if I put a 9 here, the next square plus 6x plus 9 will factor but it will factor very specifically as a binomial square. And the way that it factors is by x plus 3. Now, notice the cool connection that we have here with 3. 3 squared gives you 9, and 3 times 2 gives you 6. So it's connected to both of these numbers right here. If you had taken x squared plus 6x plus 9 and factored it you know, just like we did, in the factoring chapter, you would have had x plus 3 times x plus 3, which is the same thing as saying x plus 3 squared. Now, something to help you figure out what goes in here when it comes to factoring is by taking this guy right here before you square it. So that's why we have the positive 3. Let's try another example. Suppose I have x squared minus 14x and I've got to figure out what needs to go there so that I can factor this guy as a binomial square. Well, according to what I just showed in this last example, it looks like I just need to take this coefficient of negative 14 divided by 2 and square it. You can almost make a song out of this. Divide by 2 and square it. <laughs> Divide by 2 and square it. <laughs> See? Cool. Easy. Just divide by 2 and square it. So when you divide this by 2, you get negative 7. And then you square that guy. So negative 7 squared is a positive 49. It doesn't matter what you're going to have here, if it's a positive or a negative. Because when you square it, you will always get a positive. So that's why I always have the plus here. So this is going to be a plus 49. And now we want to see what happens whenever it factors. I put the 49 here specifically so that it will factor as a binomial square that binomial square would be x and the rest of this is going to come from right here. So it's x minus 7. So x squared minus 14x plus 49 factors to be x minus 7 squared. So if you can kind of see what's going on here, we are taking these whacked out polynomials, adjusting them a little bit so that we have something that is a square. And of course, as you've seen from the previous examples, the previous videos, once you have a square, that's getting us down the pathway where we can use the square root property. All right, let's do a couple more examples here. Let's make these guys a little bit more interesting. How about x squared minus 5x? Got to figure out what needs to go there so that it factors as a binomial square. Yeah, I know you probably don't like me now because you see what's going on here. Oh, things were okay when they were, when they were even. Yeah, but life isn't always about even numbers. So, if I take this guy, this is negative 5, divide by 2, and square it. Now, when I divide this by 2, I could say negative 2.5, but I really don't want decimals running around here. Instead, keep it as a fraction, but keep it simplified. Negative 5 halves is already simplified. We can't do anything else with that, and you do not want to go to mixed numbers. Trust me. So, 
I'm gonna just go ahead and square this guy. And, well, don't need the parentheses there. I don't know what I was thinking. Just ignore that. La la la. So you square this guy, you're gonna get a plus 25 over four. So 25 over four is what needs to be added here. Again, the parentheses was not there. I know, I'm not perfect for those of you that are watching the videos. I'm not perfect. So, 25 over 4 will complete this square, and the factored part will be x, and then what was it before you squared it? It was negative 5 halves, so minus 5 halves. And there's your factor form. All right, one more example because I know that you guys are going to love this. How about x squared plus 3 fourths x? And let's try to complete this square. Now we're going to run into issues here because this coefficient of x is 3 fourths. It's not just a number. When they were even numbers, everybody was happy. When it was an odd number, we started to get a little disgruntled because it wasn't a nice pretty number, but we could still do it. But now that we have fractions, this is where it gets kind of ugly. Dividing a fraction by two at first glance seems to be not that much fun. But there's another way to divide by two. So when it comes to fractions, you don't want to divide by two. Instead, multiply times one half. So multiply times one half and then square. Multiplying times one half is the same thing as dividing by two. And we know, let's think about it. What's 10 divided by two? Five. What's half of 10? Still five. So now let's finish working this guy out. Uh, inside here, you're gonna have three eighths. And then you have to square that guy. You can't reduce three over eight, so leave it that way. When you square this, you end up with nine over 64. So that's the missing piece. 9 over 64 is the missing piece to complete the square. So in the factor form, we have x. And this guy was a positive 3 eighths. So I'm just going to write plus 3 eighths. So what you're going to see here when we go on to the next video is that completing the square is nice when you have an even coefficient for x. And it's not so nice otherwise.